Hi and welcome to this video in the MRDCL Central Working Smarter Series. And in this video, we're going to be looking at handling multiple runs automatically. So let's first of all say what I mean by that and why you want to do it. So there are times when you have projects where you want to run it more than once. Maybe you're doing a multi-country survey and you want to produce a volume of tables for, let's say, four or five different countries. Or it might be a tracking study where you want to produce tables for uh, monthly data, quarterly data and annual data. There are various reasons why you might want to do multiple runs. Now, you can do this obviously by sitting using uh, the MRD, MRDCL interface and just clicking on options and running them one at a time. But that can be quite uh, boring and time consuming and easy to forget where you are. So. There's a batch file facility, as it's called in MRDCL Central, that lets you set up multiple runs so that they execute effectively one after the other. And of course, if these are big runs, you can run them overnight um, and just leave them to run so that when you come into the office the next morning, you'll find them all there completed. So this particular example here, I'm going to start with this example where we've got two settings in here now. If you're not familiar with setting parameters, uh, there is a video in the MRDCL Understanding Concept series that you should watch that will take you through this in somewhat more detail. But what we're doing here is we're setting two parameters, one for region and one for the name of the output file. So this particular project, as we see if we scroll down, has three regions, north, central and south. And what I'm planning to do here is run three sets of tables and call the output region one, region two, region three, so that I get three volumes of tables, one for each of the regions uh, filtered. And there's some really sophisticated tools in MRDCL so that you can either make that interactive, so it comes up with a menu of options that you can uh, select and check. Um, and of course, also, if you've got differences, particularly in a multi-country project, you can have differences in the questionnaire, maybe different brand lists, different regions, different cities, whatever it might be. And you can use skip commands in your STP file so that it only processes the particular cities or brands relevant to that country. And again, that's all covered in the video on understanding concepts. So this particular run, We've got three regions and I want to get three volumes of tables and it's quite a simple example this one. So if we go down to the tables here, you'll see that it's got a command in here that says unless region is square bracket region, go to finish. So what that's going to do is when region is set to one, it'll filter the tables on region one when it's two, uh, region two and when it's three, the third region. Right now, if I can run this in the sort of traditional classic way, first of all, but I'm going to show you afterwards how to set this up as three runs that automatically uh, are generated one after the other without any uh, interception by the user. So let's first of all run this using what I call sort of the, the, the standard way of doing this. So I can click on this run button here and click on the prompt button here. And when I execute it, it's going to ask me what region I want. So that could be an, an ask that's uh, selecting, giving me a menu to select the option I want for this particular run. In this case, it's just set, uh, expecting a figure. So I'm going to type in number one there. And it's going to ask me for the output file, which I'm going to call region one. And it's gone off and done that and run that for me. And I could now run it again and do region two and region three. If I look at the tables over here, you can see I've only got data for the north in this particular set of tables, whereas if I select two, I'd only get uh, data in the tables for central and three for south. So that's all worked fine. But what I'd like to do now is sort of take that and make automate that somewhat more so that we actually can put all the three runs in together and just let them run without really having to do them one at a time as I was doing there. So there's an option on the top menu here that says run batch setup. So let's click on that. And you can see what I've got here. I've got uh, run one.stp is the STP file I'm executing. And I'm executing it with 
two settings each time. So I'm setting the region, the PP region equal to one and the output to region one, the region to two and the region to two. And then just to show you what happens if you do something that's just uh, illegal, I said output region four, but I set region equal to seven. Now there are only three regions. So when we run this, this is going to crash because there is no region seven and MRDCL will crash in execution. So let's just run that and see what it looks like. And I can do that by clicking on here on the run button. And you can see it's bringing up classic running one at a time. And then there's the last one. And so it's given me green icons here to say that these two work, but red icons here to say that this one failed and the actual STP that's controlling these runs also hit a fail because it crashed on the final one here. So we might want to remove this one. And that's what I'm going to do now. In fact, I'm going to add one here. So I'm going to add a new one on and leave this one in here and show you how you can work around that. Well, one thing I could do would be to exclude it. So you can see there's an exclude button there. So that will mean it's not run. And I'm now going to add the run for the, the uh, settings for the third one. And so I'm going to add one to this particular batch file. Click on here. You can see I get an empty one at the bottom. And I'm just going to type in the settings that I want, which is output to region three. You'll see there's a space between each of the parameters. You can have more parameters than this. These are just settings in the control stage effectively. And I'm going to set PP region equal to three as well. So I've now got a new item in here. Now that icon is gray at the moment because it's new. It's never been run before. So it's not green or red. It's just gray because we haven't tested it. Now, as you saw, I've now excluded this one here. So let's exclude it. There we are. So that run that fails is excluded. And now if I click the run button, it should go ahead and run the three we want. And leave this one as gray because it didn't attempt to run this one. And you can see the overall run is green and each of the three that I wanted to run have run successfully. And I can just go into the tables if I want to. I could look at these uh, either within the uh, uh, interface at the top here, or I could look at them down here. You can see I've got the table sitting here. So if I look at the run three tables, for example, you can see I've just got data in the south. So that looks as though that's worked absolutely fine. All right, so if I want to though, I could bring this back so I won't exclude it this time and I can click on here now if I want to normally this will ab abort if it finds an error so as soon as any of these runs fail it will crash so but that's the reason I excluded this one just now but there is a checkbox here so that if I click on here it will carry on even if a run fails so what it's going to do now if I run it again now it will attempt to run this one that's got the invalid settings. Onto the second one. Now it's onto the third one. And finally, it's doing the fourth one. And you can see that's come back as red now because uh, that was in a, a, a failed setting there with the region being set to seven. And I had checked that uh, there. And you can see I could give this a batch name so that it's retrievable later on. So I could call this my run or something. And if I want a longer description, I could put the runs needed so that I've got some way of knowing what that is if I've got multiple batch runs. And now I've saved that batch so that I can use it. And I could create another batch run here that does some different runs if I want to and have as many of these if I like for the product project. So as you can see, this makes it very easy to run multiple runs. I've only run three runs here, but if you had a multi-country survey with 20 countries, you could set this up in the same way and automatically run 20 runs. And there's a couple of other settings that are worth showing you while we're doing this. So this sets whether you compile, execute and print each of these runs. This uh, checkbox here, whether you get the full info when you run, if you're familiar with the run control parameter in info. And this also allows you to produce an XLXX file, which is the uh, formatted tables 
in an Excel format with uh, hyperlinks. And that means that you can actually set up all the batch runs, all your hyperlink tables automatically for multiple runs without having to go through later and uh, set that up as a separate exercise. So you can do your formatting of your tables in Excel as part of the process. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, there is another video in the series called Formatting Tables in Excel that will show you how you can set up your um, runs so that you get the tables with hyperlinks in Excel with different, well, many different options in terms of uh, the numbers and the actual sheets you produce. Well, I hope that's been useful to you. Thank you for joining me.